Hello everyone, welcome to my channel and check out these beauties. Aren't they just gorgeous? These are my sort of shabby vintage, slightly boho style tassels and this is what we're going to be making today and I know some of you don't realize it but you've been waiting to make these and we'll get started shortly. Just let me get my stuff together and get to my table. See you in a second. Hi everyone, here I am again. It's Kim here. Um, so I've brought some of these uh, tassels with me to the table for you to have a closer look at them because I know it was hard to see on that screen. Um, they are made using an assortment of fibers and lace and fabric pieces and trims and whatever I had on hand. And then they're decorated with beads and I have uh, beads on chains hanging down um, and some bling here around this thing. And what is this thing? I wonder what this thing is. Let me show you. All those glue caps you've been saving, that is the cap that I use to make these tassels. And uh, we're going to go through the whole process. This may have to be in two videos. I'm going to be watching my time, but I will have it completed today. So one way or another, you're going to see the finished results, but it may be in two parts. But yeah, that's what's inside is the original bead cap. And I know it looks co really large compared to the bead cap, but that's because of all the wrapping and stuff that we do to this. This is a very easy process and there's lots of alternatives for supplies. If you're worried about the different supplies that you might have to have, I've got lots of ways to show you how you can have different supplies. Um, so this one has the bling around it and the beaded chains. Now this one, instead of uh, putting bling around, I put some gems. You can use coins, beads, you can stitch things on here, sequins, pieces of glittery fabric, all kinds of goodies that you can put on here. And the beaded chains, again, it's, it's a combination of beads that I'm using, but you can use broken jewelry. Um, you can make your own paper beads or, or fancy beads. I won't do that today, but uh, we will have a chance where this could come up where I can show you how to make your own beads uh, to use for stuff like this. And um, yeah, the, the uh, dangles are just different charms that I had and things to dangle, broken pieces of jewelry. And, and I will show you this as we go along. And, and in this one, again, I'm using some some uh, fibers for for uh, wool, like wool for doing knitting and crocheting. I'm using some torn fabric strips. Um, this one has some ribbon in it and uh, a wound cord. So there's lots of things that you can use for them. Now this one has, and I'm sure you've seen this in in your local small change stores. They come on a roll. There's it's like a plastic flat backed bead. Um, so, so it's not an expensive project to make these. And again, I'm using some chain. This has a little bit more wool fibers in it, lace, lots of ribbon. So it's whatever you have on hand. So let's get started. I'm just going to move these out of the way. And you need an assortment of fibers. So today I'm going to make an orange one, um, cause th that's my next color in line. Um, so you need an assortment of fibers and you're going to need 24 pieces. Now these uh, tassels that I've made are made using 18 inch long strips. Uh, but, and it's, so it's quite a long tassel. It's, it's easily 12 inches with the, with the beads. So it might be a little bit long for stuff that you want to do, uh, in which case you would just make the, the tassel length a little shorter. Um, but yeah, we use an assortment of 24, uh, strips and I like to do sort of, uh, four of each kind. And then I'll show you how I, how I do that. Um, but, but I've decided to work with orange today. That's my next color. And so I'm going to use a combination. Um, I have this lace here. It, it's uh, an ivory color and that just gives you a little bit of contrast. You can do everything matchy match if you want to, but I just like to have a little bit of contrast when I'm doing this. Um, so I have that and then I have um, some other fibers and ribbons in my bag of tricks here. So I think I'm going to use um, this ribbon, we're, we're, uh, this Pico Edge ribbon. 
And this, you can, you can find this in the thrift stores and in your small change stores on rolls, and you get quite a bit on a roll. So that'll be the, the fourth one that I'm going to use. And then I think I have, um, oh, I have this fiber here. So I have another fiber. So this will give us a nice little combination. And I, I didn't have orange fabric handy. And, and I always I say, use what you have. And, and my aunt had sent me this beautiful orange shirt, knowing I wouldn't wear it. It's, it's, a, it's not going to fit. <laughs> There's no way it's going to fit. She, she bought it at a thrift shop knowing that I was going to do something with it. And it's got some glittery stuff in there. So I'm just going to cut off a sleeve. I think the sleeve is long enough because I'm making these strips 18 inches long. Yes, it's long enough. So I'm just going to cut off the sleeve. Now this is not normally how I would take a shirt apart and we are going to someday have that class but I'm just going close to the seam not right uh, to the hole to, to cut the seam off because uh, sometimes I use the seam for certain things and that's another project in another day. Uh, but I've decided I'm going to use this sleeve and you may have uh, t-shirts at home. You may have um, bed sheets, like here's a piece of a bed sheet just to show you. Uh, if you saw my video on my last thrift shop haul, I tear up bed sheets uh, and, and uh, reuse them to make ribbons. So I'm just going to tear this at about a half an inch wide, just so you can see. Now I'm not going to use this in my project today, but um, I just tear them into strips and this becomes the fabric that I use. So, you know, if you, you're short of a, a piece of fabric, just take the sheet right off your bed and, um, well, maybe you should wash it first. Um, but t just take the sheet right off your bed and use it. Um, so there's lots of opportunity and lots of strips that you can get out of a piece of fabric like this. And you don't have to just use it for making strips. You can use it for making pockets and, uh, uh, clusters and snippet rolls and um, page flips, uh, journal covers. So it is endless what you can do with, with one bed sheet. Uh, so yeah, look out. I, I think a lot of people are going to be having bare mattresses soon because um, I can go on and on with this. But that's that's an option if you don't have uh, uh, some fabric in the colors that you want and or, or maybe you don't have a shirt that you want to cut up uh, but there's other opportunities and then there's t-shirts there's there's a million different pieces of fabric that you can cut up you can cut up an old tea towel that and, and uh, dye it in a color that you like um, you can you can cut up um, shirts and t-shirts and blankets and and uh, tea towels and so whatever you have in your house just uh, use what you have um, another uh, example is I had bought this this pink curtain um, at the thrift shop I didn't pay very much for it and this is just a piece that's sitting on my desk but it's easy enough to, to cut it up into strips to use in your creations so that gives you just another idea you may not have curtains on the windows now uh, but you'll have some really great art piece because, you know, if you had curtains and, and nice bed sheets, um, they're probably in all your favorite colors that you like to work with anyway. So, so yeah, just strip the house of whatever you've got and, and start making some tassels. Like, this is easy enough to do. The raggedy edge just lends um, to the, you know, the um, sort of vintage and distressed uh, tassels that we make. So, so um yeah, uh, go ahead and <laughs> cut up all kinds of things that you have at home. Um, just uh, don't take your husband's underwear. That's probably uh, one rule that you would uh, stop at. But yeah, the rest is is uh, there for the taking. So use what you have. So now that I've uh, gone through that, I'm just going to quickly open up this sleeve and cut myself some strips. I'm trying to watch my time here. So like I said, we may have to cut this into two videos in order to make it work. Now I'm going to cut off the seam on this sleeve and save it for another project. I know you think I'm crazy sometimes, but um, you will use all the stuff that I, I tell you to save. You will use it. And of course, going through both fabrics 
Now you can find, if you go to the thrift shop, sometimes uh, some of the thrift shops have these fabulous sales where they say, you know, fill a bag for five or ten dollars. That's the time when you go and you you uh, check out all of the uh, clothing you would never wear. Um, and it's all that glittery, flowery stuff. And you fill a bag for five or ten dollars and then you can make tassels coming out of your ears. Um, and tassels can be used for your journal covers. They can be used for um, decorating your home. Um, maybe decorating a purse handle or um, you can make a tassel, a shorter one to wear as a, as jewelry around your neck or uh, add on to a belt, end of a belt. If you want to be um, a little of a, a bit of a hippie chick, you can, you can wear it as part of your clothing. Um, so there's a million uses for it. I personally like to just have them hanging in my art room uh, for inspiration and I do use them for journals. Um, as a, as a decorative element on my journals. And you can see there's no real rhyme. I'm doing about a, probably about a loose half inch of a strip here that I'm cutting. And, and some of them are catching these glittery bits, which is kind of nice. And I'm going to use four of these. If I can open this up and cut it. I'm sorry that I make you go through this, but I wanted you to see the shirt in its, um, full completeness before I took it apart and, and realized that, yeah, it doesn't take much. And, and look at this fabric. I'm going to use this for many um, um, tassels ahead of me. Um, so there's my, my first strip. I'm just going to measure it out. It's approximately 18 inches that I'm working at. If you look at the edge of my table, I have a line here for 18. If you want them shorter for a book, you may want to go with a 12 inch length. Um, each of these strips is going to get folded in half. So it's about 18 inches. It's not, doesn't have to be perfect, but I'm just trying to uh, do approximately 18 inches. So there's my first one. And then I'm going to go through the, the different pieces and do, cut them all up at the same time. So now that's one, like I said, we need about 24 pieces. So one, uh, four of each kind. So we'll need six different ones. So three and there's four. Let me get that out of the way. Um, I'm really loving uh, making these tassels and, and even though I'm only making one for you on the camera today, I'll probably do about seven or eight in the orange. And I'm also working on ivory right now too. I have them almost done. So one, two, three, four. Get that out of my way. Let's cut this one. one. Isn't this beautiful glittery um, fibers? Now I have collected fibers for years and yes, back in the day when they were so popular to um, knit and crochet with, um, you could find them full price in, in your different um, outlets for, for this type of stuff. Um, and now that it's not so popular, you'll find a ball like this in a bag at a thrift shop, or you might find two or three balls of the same color or different colors. Start collecting them and using them for your journals, use them for your, your tassels. There's a million uses for these things for, for crafting with. And now you can pick them up for, for 25 cents or 50 cents a ball. You, it just takes time. And in no time at all, you'll have a huge collection. And, and I honestly, if you visit the wool section of different stores, you can find them in, in bags, uh, you know, with two or three different kinds. So it isn't hard to have a collection in no time at all and, and very inexpensive. Back in the day, I often would pay three, four dollars for one ball, but not anymore. And even though I have a huge, huge collection, I still pick them up every time I see them. Even if I say, oh my gosh, I'll never use 10 balls of that color. 
It's called Happy Mail. It's called Making Tassels. Now I'm using this lace and I'm just going to cut four of those. One. Um, so, so there's lots of ways to use it up. Uh, it's great for tying tags, uh, enhancing some of your journal pages. It's also great for um, uh, doing snippets. Uh, someday I'll do a little tutorial on making uh, snippet rolls. One, two, three, four. So I need one more color. So I'm going to use this Pico Edged Ribbon. And I don't know if I have enough of that, but it really doesn't matter. I can do a mix. So there's two here. Oh yeah, I've got lots. I'm only making one tassel, I have to remind myself. And I think, because I think these were pre-cut in yards, so this is about, yeah, it's about exactly right. So there's my 24 pieces, I think. Now you need some wire. And I'm using um, a 20 gauge wire that you can pick up at your local thrift shop. They come in rolls of 25 yards or 15 yards, I guess, uh, 15 yards. Now you need about 10 inches. So I have a 12 inch measuring thing. Usually I just wing it and go with it. But, but for the sake of this video, I'm actually gonna measure sort of. So there's my piece of wire. And all I'm doing is I'm taking my finger and bending it just a little bit to make a hook. And there is no real measurement as to how much of a hook, maybe about an inch, I guess, a little better than an inch. Um, but just using your finger to make a hook. And we're going to gather these up, but I like to mix them up. So I'm going to uh, grab one of each of these fa uh, pieces. One, two, three. Four. There's my fabric five, and I'm missing one. Two, three, four, five. Which one am I missing? Oh, this one. Yes. So I'm grabbing six. No rhyme or reason as to how I grabbed them. And then I'm going to do the same thing again. Grab another six. This way you have a nice uh, mix to... And I can't do that one. Yes. This is almost like a sari. Um, so it can get used for a lot of things. Five and six. So you can see already I'm getting a nice mix together. And one, I feel like I'm exercising. And two, and three, and four. Two, three. Now you can mix them as you cut them, of course, that would be the easiest and the smartest way to do it, but you still need to kind of grab them and gather them all together anyway. And it's really just to uh, make sure you have a good mix and assortment. So it doesn't take that long to. I think I lost one somewhere along the way, but that's okay. Sometimes when we're chatting, we we don't pay attention to what we're doing, right? It's a good thing it's not rocket science. Okay, so I have a nice mix here. And I'm just going to fold it in half. And I don't worry too much about those little ends because, you know, some of them were cut a little bit shorter. You can kind of pull them back and forth. I don't know if you can see that. You just kind of pull them until you get them exactly or not exactly, but closely even. I like the stragglers. I may cut off this one piece afterwards, but for the most part, I like them very shabby looking. And then you take your wire that you've made into a hook and bring the two ends up together. And can you see that? And then just kind of finger comb it a little bit and get them reasonably organized and straight and see how they look and then I take that little piece that from the hook and I bend it down and you kind of find your halfway right so I bend it down 
And if there's still some left over, because like I said, we don't measure, um, then I wrap it back up again. And then I take the long end and do the same thing. Bring it down under the, the uh, fibers and back up again so that your wire is back up at the top, just like that. And that is enough to hold it. You, you don't need much more. Sometimes there's a little bit of bulkiness inside with the wire. So I just take my pliers and just give it a little bit of a squish so that it's not so bulky. And so now your fibers are ready to be made into a tassel. Look at that. Isn't it beautiful? You really don't have to do much more to it than that. If you, if you want, you can just string some beads on. As long as your wire is nicely buried, you could string your beads on and make a little loop and you're good to go. But, you know, we want to use these caps and make a really fancy bead uh, top. So these are um, plastic caps from the glue sticks. I do have one. I haven't done it yet, but I have one. It's a top from um, deodorant that I've kept. And I think with this one, I'm going to make three tassels because it's quite a large size. So stay tuned. I may show you the three, three uh, with three different tassels. So in which case it'll be done a little bit differently than this one. I also have this metal, I think it's a perfume bottle cap. Um, so I thought maybe someday I'll do this one as well. Wouldn't this look pretty on the top of, um, uh, this orange one, but not for today. Um, but I, I mainly, uh, want you to look at things differently. And, and like I always say, crafting with your eyes open because, um, many things can become, uh, caps for making your tassels, even, even, um, a bottle of, of glue. This would make an really interesting, uh, tassel cap. Um, uh, it may take a little bit of work to, to get it to look good, but I see a lot of possibilities in this cap as well. Um, so yeah, maybe one day I'll do one of those as well. You can also do the big hairspray caps, or maybe you have, uh, some body wash or, um, body spray that comes with a plastic cap that you can use that as well. Um, you may have to test as to how you can put holes in it because that's what we're going to do next is put holes in these little caps. So I have my little pokey tool. It's an awl. Um, I suggest that you have an awl. You could do this with a hammer and a nail, um, but it's, it's a little harder to do. And if you're making junk journals and you're already doing crafting things, this is a handy tool to have, whether you have this one or whether you have one from one of the scrapbooking companies. Um, and then it's always handy to have a board or, and a piece of foam that you can, uh, poke into. So for this, this, uh, glue cap, I'm, I'm going to, it conveniently has a nice little marker right there to tell me where the center is, which is perfect. Um, so I'm just going to take my awl and, um, you know, you're doing this at your own risk. If you poke your fingers, it's your fault, not mine. And I'm going to just gently push until it goes through. And then after it goes through, I'm going to push it a little bit more by hand back and forth because I want a good size hole in here because that's where the wire is going to go through. So once you have your hole in there, um, you can, you can poke the wire through for your tassel and start on the next process. But I also want to have all those things dangling and hanging from my tassel, uh, or from the cap. So we're going to make holes along the side. Now you want to go as close to the edge as you can, and you want to make holes that go a across from each other and across this way. That'll give you four holes if you do it uh, the four ways you could make six and eight but for the sake of this video we're just going to make four and uh you may decide not to make any you know it depends on how you want to decorate it after and there are other uh options for decorating other than than poking holes in this but i just like to be able to have all these things hanging so using this foam and the awl, I'm going to poke my first hole from the inside. Now I'm going to try and bring you closer if I can. Um, no, that didn't work. Um, not quite. 
quite know how to make you closer. But I'll just make the first one and then bring it up to show you. So I'm going inside with my awl I'm, or my pokey tool and, and I'm just going barely inside the, the bottom of the cap and just pushing my, my um, awl through. Now this is a very soft plastic and so I'm pushing it so I get the hole a little bit bigger and then this plastic is almost like a self-healing plastic. It has this tendency to want to close up a little bit. So I line it up again from the outside and then gently push it back in the other way. And you may have to go back and forth a couple of times as you're doing this, um, you know, because the hole might just kind of close in on itself a little bit. So you may have to go back and open up the hole a little bit more again. So now that I've made this hole here, I'm going to make one directly across from it. So holding it uh, where, where this hole is up at the top, I'm going to put it back down and, you know, it's it doesn't have to line up perfectly. And, and I'm going to do the same thing. So now I have a hole on the other side across from the first one I made. So you're making like a plus sign, an imaginary uh, plus sign. And then again, I'm going from the outside and pushing it in again, just to have the two holes. So I have a hole at, the, at this end and a hole at this end now going across this way. And so I'm going to turn it and do two holes going that way. Does that make sense, everybody? Four holes in total, making a cross, an imaginary cross, or an X if, if you prefer an X. And the easiest way to find the center is to line up where the holes are on either side. And then you know that down here, that's reasonably close to, to being your third hole. And again, sorry, I don't know how to make it closer. So I'm just going to come closer with the piece that I'm working on. I've never had to make it closer on my video so far. So now I have three and so this third one, I'm just going to have that up at the top and I'm going to make my hole down here. And just push it in. And it's a very soft plastic, but something like this metal, you may have to use a hammer and a nail to, to, um, poke holes into it. Same with at the top, you might have to use a hammer and, and a nail. I would probably turn it this way and, and hammer from the inside through to the bottom. Uh, this way you won't have this, it might not, this way it won't cave in on you if it's not uh, a perfectly, um, or if you hammer too hard. So so for this, I would I would look at other methods. If your crocodile will fit inside here and, and make holes for you all around, that's great. Otherwise, you would probably use the same method, putting it on your, your uh, surface that you're going to poke the hole through, and I would just use a hammer and a nail. It's one of those things that you have to play around and figure out what works best for you. And some plastics are hard, and they're not going to be as forgiving and you you know you may put a hole in it and crack it um but don't don't give up on it uh just continue to make it without the holes and you'll see another opportunity of how you can decorate with dangles and and not have to put these holes in so once you've got all your holes in and you've kind of just double um gone through them so that you know that the holes are there we have to next put in some jump rings so to use the jump rings, I have a few here. Um, I like to either put them on a piece of fabric or somewhere where they're not going to fly around on you. And you have to open them up with a pair of pliers. Now for those of you that have worked with jump rings before, just carry on. But for those of you that are new to working with jump rings, they have a little cut on the side of the, to open them up. And we have a tendency to think that when we open it, we want to open it this way. Um, and, and that is not the correct way to open a jump ring. The correct way is to hold it in one hand where you can have the, the, uh, where the crack is, where you know you're going to open it, and you're going to open it back and forth. You're just going to um, use two pairs of pliers or, or uh, two tools, whatever works for you, and open it backwards and forwards, like towards you and away from you not this way, not going this way. You're going back and forth till you have the jump ring open. 
And then you're going to put it through one of the little holes on the side. Just like that. Can you see? And then you're going to close it and you're going to close it the same way that you opened it going backwards and forwards to yourself. But as you're doing that, just give a little bit of a slight push in at the same time. Now you won't hear it on the, on the, on the video probably, but as you're pushing it, you will feel it click. And I'm going to try to be silent and let you hear it. And you, I don't think you can hear it. But once you hear that little click, you know that it's closed. Sorry, let go of it here. And, and you can actually feel the click. Uh, if, if you're pressing the two pairs of pliers into each other, you can feel the click. And, and then you have your jump ring on. And we're going to put all four jump rings around the sides. Again, if it's not something that you want to do, then you don't have to... Um, you can just uh, wait out this step or fast forward, but you know, um, it's not going to take that long to, to put four jump rings in. And again, putting it through the piece, taking your pliers, putting them back together. Now jump rings, people don't like jump rings, but my suggestion for jump rings uh, to learn how to best open and close them is to go online on YouTube and look up a DIY for doing chain mail and do one or two projects with chain mail, simple little projects that they, they start you off with. And by the time you finish those, you'll be an expert at working with jump rings. Um, it's just one of those things that if you get used to it, and like I said, I, as I, as I bring it back to each other, I give, I kind of push in so I can hear that click where the two pieces of metal are actually touching. The jump rings, when they're cut, are kind of cut on an angle, um, so it's not a perfect fit, which is why I say kind of bring it in a little bit and bring it back, and you will f then you will take the two pieces that are cut on angles, and they will line up like this, and that's why you will hear that clicking noise when, when they actually line up. You need a magnifying glass to look at these really closely, and I'm at the stage in my life where I do have to look a little closer, but... Uh, for the sake of this video, I'm just going to get through it and then I will go back with my magnifier and, and fix it from there. But opening up side to side, or I mean back and forth, and then closing it back and forth, putting a little bit of pressure as you go close. So you hear that click. And so now I have my four jump rings closed and on my cap. So to put the, the um, wire and the tassel on, again, this is at your own risk, depending on which type of glue you use. I like to use a hot glue gun, and I have one ready here. And I'm just putting a little dot of glue along the top of the tassel, along the wire. And then feeding the wire through that little hole in the center at the top that we made going down over the tassel and then just gently pulling. And it's not enough to totally secure it, but by the time we are finished with this uh, tassel, you it's not going to go anywhere. Now, another step to do is to cover the top of this tassel. And I pre-made uh, or pre-cut some round circles. Um, it just so happened that the, the cap is the same size as my punch so I was able to ha um, uh, punch them out uh, quite easily but if you have to do it by hand um, somewhere on my table here if you do it by hand uh, which is easy enough to do you would just trace your cap out onto a piece of uh, decorative paper just like that and manually cut it out when you cut it out you want to cut it out of course just slightly smaller because you're tracing from the outside of the cap and the the uh, decorative paper is going on the top of the cap. So in order to do that, um, I then take um, my uh, pokey tool and line it up. And it's again approximate. 
I mean, you could, you could glue it down at the same time if you want to your cap and put it on. Uh, Kim picked the right color because we're not doing the ivory. We kind of got an orange color here. And I'm just going to put it on to the cap. So now you can see it has a decorative finish. It doesn't have to fit perfectly. It doesn't have to be glued down perfectly because by the time we're done, it will be fully glued down. And I'm just going to put a little bit of glue, just to, enough to hold it in place uh, while we're working. And I see I've been 35 minutes now, and so that makes for a really long video. And so I'm going to pause this. This is the end of part one, and we will continue with part two shortly. I'll be right back.